All right. So my name is Cameron Barrett. As he mentioned, I'm the Senior Manager of Website Technology for Newark Public Schools. It is the largest public school district in the state of New Jersey, around 38,000 students, uh, six or 7,000 teachers and professionals, and about 66 schools, 67 depending on how you count them. Um, my background is kind of interesting. I pioneered the blog format way back in 1997. I initially wrote an essay called Anatomy of a Weblog that kind of defined what blogs are. And I started blogging. I was like, I'm like easily the second oldest blogger on the internet. I mean, blogging for the longest time. But I don't really blog anymore. But everything that I wrote back in the 90s and the early 2000s is still up online at camworld.org. Um, I'm an old school web guy. I used to build a lot of stuff for the Apache Software Foundation, Sun Microsystems, Motorola. I was working in the open source software development field where I was taking those software development methodologies and taking them into these big corporations and teaching them how to do software development in a better way. I'm also a UX designer, information architect, web designer. I've been doing this stuff since the mid 90s. Um, I've built sites for Clark for President. 2004, US Army, World Economic Forum. You guys know who they are? They're the, the organization, nonprofit in Geneva, Switzerland that runs the Davos Conference. The Davos Conference is where all the business leaders and the world leaders get together once a year in January in the, Alp, in the Swiss Alps, and they talk about what's going on in the, in the world and how can they help move things forward in the world. Very important conference. Sadly, none of those websites were on WordPress. They were in .NET. They were in Drupal. Um, in 2003, I was at the open source conference in Portland, Oregon, the O'Reilly Open Source Convention. And out of that conference grew this mailing list called the CMS list, the Content Management System list. And so me and this guy named Phil built this mailing list, and it grew within a year to like five or 6,000 people in the CMS business communicating about what's happening and promoting the product and talking about CMSs. And this is back in the day where the CMS was still kind of a new thing. You know, I was using movable type, which is Perl based and Drupal, which is PHP MySQL. But WordPress at the time, 2003, 2004, was still kind of like a little blip on the radar. I wasn't paying attention to it very well. Um, I was so focused on other things, I just didn't pay attention. And so at this conference, this kid comes up to me. And he's like, are you Cameron Barrett? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I've been on your mailing list, and I just wanted to meet you. And that was Matt Mullenweg, 2004. Maybe it was 2003. I can't remember. It was one of those two years. And Matt goes, I've got this product that I'm building. It's called WordPress. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I've kind of heard of it. It's you know, still brand new at the time. But you know, this, this is Matt. I think he was 20, 21. He's a pretty young kid. But he's done such a great job in the past um, 12, 13 years of getting WordPress to be what it is today. And I really applaud him for that. He's done a fantastic job of leading the, leading the community and getting people involved. Um, here's a real example of what I was doing back in the early 2000s. Um, this was a website for the US Army. It was for the Army Board of Generals. It was built in Microsoft.net on a proprietary CMS. And we spent uh, six months, four developers, UX person, project manager, a bunch of other people. We spent a million dollars on building this website out. And we launched, we got it ready for launch, and we're like, here we go, we're going to launch it. It was called the Orion Project. We're going to launch it. And then we got a, an email from somebody down in DC. <laughs> and they're like, uh, no, you're going to cancel the project. So we spent all that money, all that taxpayer money on this project that ended up being canceled. And I'm like, you know, think of the kind of money we'd have spent, we would have saved if we'd used something like an open source product like Drupal or WordPress. Um, 
The good news is that same project, uh, years later, is now migrating to WordPress. So WordPress is starting to creep into the federal government, starting to creep into our defense department, and people are recognized the value of an open source product like WordPress. Yay, right? <laughs> so it's really good news. Um, but what about schools, right? My session is WordPress for schools, and that's where I've been working in the past uh, four or five years of just helping school districts move to WordPress. Um, in the summer of 2013, uh, I got a job offer from Toys R Us, you know, the big toy store chain. Uh, director of UX, global e-commerce, they're redeveloping their entire back-end platform for e-commerce. They're moving it from a, a closed source system to something else. And they're like, oh, this is a great opportunity. I was so excited to take it. And then I realized, well, the development team was in Poland, and it would have required me to travel from New York to Poland six to 10 times a year, back and forth, back and forth, easily a week at a time, which kind of meant a bit of a hitch there. Um, I just spent two years working for the World Economic Forum in Geneva, and where I was traveling four times a year to Geneva, from New York to Geneva and back. And it was, oh, it was awesome, it was a great job, I loved it doing really good, important work. Um, but I had a wife and a baby daughter. This is my daughter when she was like one. <clears throat> Look how cute she is. Like, <laughs> I love this picture. Um, so I had a wife and a baby daughter and my wife basically, she's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> my wife said, you just took a, you just left a job where you were commuting to Europe too much. Uh, I don't really want you to take this job with Toys R Us. Um, <laughs> she, she, she went so far as to say, it's not going to work out. <laughs> if you do this, I'm going to be home alone with our daughter, and you're just never going to be home. I just, I, she said no, and so. I'm still married, thankfully. <laughs> I'm still married. So I actually said no to this amazing job with Toys R Us. Um, instead, what I did is I took a job, it's a New Jersey State job with Newark Public Schools, where I migrated the entire district, all of their public facing websites to WordPress. Um, and it's a local commute, 10 miles, it's like easy, I loved it, it was great. No more going into New York City, no more you know, 90 minutes every morning on the train or the bus. Uh, I can get in my car and drive to work, it's, it's great. Um, but just a little bit more about me, because everybody likes talking about themselves, right? <laughs> Are we all a little bit narcissistic? Um, a little bit more about me, and this is an important factor. Um, I grew up in places, I was, I'm a part of a teaching family. My parents were school teachers. They worked for the Department of Defense Dependent Schools. So every time you have a military base overseas, there's schools on these military bases that teach the, Amer the kids of American servicemen, right? So my parents worked in this, in this uh, Dodd system. And so I grew up in places like Pongo Pongo, American Samoa. Anybody seen Moana yet? Great movie, right? This the new Disney movie. It's all about the Polynesian Islands. It's fantastic. So I grew up in places like this. This is a, uh, a top secret military base in Northern England. It's not even on any maps. And from as far as a cartographer is concerned, it doesn't exist. But those big white golf ball looking things are weather coverings for radars, for big uh, satellite uh, radar dishes. So this is a top secret communication space in Northern England. I lived there as a kid, as uh, my parents were school teachers. But I mean, I, the point is I care about our schools. I mean, I love our schools. I think the American public school system is the best in the world, and I think it can continue to be the best in the world. Um, but I decided not to follow my parents into the teaching profession. I decided that I'm a technologist. You know, I grew up with computers in the 80s and the 90s. Um, I wanted to work with computers as, a, as, a, as an adult. And so I went into the technology field in the 90s. And I, I realized that in the early 2000s and in the, in the early 2010s, I realized that I can use all of the skills that I've learned 
as a technologist, and I can use those to help our public schools solve their technology problems. Um, there's 14,000 plus public school districts in our country. I mean, that's a lot of school districts. And, you know, they all have websites, right? I mean, there's a couple that don't. They have a page somewhere, but they all have websites. It's important that a school have a website. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Correction. <laughs> Most of them have crappy websites. They're just, they're not that well done. They're not designed well. They're just kind of thrown up. They're never updated frequently enough. Um, they they kind of look like this. They're like wall of text, right? Who's going to read all that text? And it never changes. That's been up. That's been up there for six months. You know, if you're a parent coming to this website, are you going to come back a second and a third time? Probably not, because there's no new information there for you. Um, this is a real world example. This was one of Newark Public Schools uh, school websites in 2012 um, using a proprietary CMS vendor solution. Every one of those red boxes is a flash file. <laughs> it's like, okay, 2012, we're already five years into the iPhone. Everybody knows that flash doesn't work on the iPhone. This website, while the content was there, it was completely inaccessible. I mean, this is what it looked like on, a, on an iPad. It just, I mean, seriously? And this was a vendor selling very expensive content management system software to a school district. You know, I, I think WTF, right? Everybody knows what that means? What the flash, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> Mobile view, I mean, it's even worse. I mean, can you imagine trying to use this website on an iPhone in 2012, 2013? It's unacceptable, really. I mean, these are your taxpayer dollars being spent on this proprietary CMS from a vendor. Um, the sites were complete failure. Uh, it's no surprise that parents don't, they report that they don't regularly go to their children's website, children's schools websites. They're just, they've learned through experience that the website doesn't serve their needs the way they want. Um, why? Okay, well, it's not the school's fault. It's not the district's fault. It's the schools are being sold these closed source, it's a long phrase there, but it's sold in closed source, vendor controlled, horrible, barely working, confusing user interface, software as a service solutions. You know, they're just, this is what the vendor offers and the schools lap it up because they don't know any better. Um, you know, which leads to websites that are not updated frequently enough. They're, uh, you know, because it's too hard. You know, not just the fact that the, the CMS is failing to provide a, a quality website, it's never being updated because the CMS is hard to use. Again, these are administrators and teachers and principals trying to update websites. It's got to be user friendly. It's got to be something that they're going to be able to easily figure out, even with a little bit of training, that they can figure it out and actually update their website on a more frequent basis. Um, you have bad templates, bad design. I call the bad clip art mania. Everybody, everybody remember what Microsoft Word clip art looked like in, uh, in uh, I think, early 2000s, 2000, up through like 2008? I mean, this is <laughs> terrible. Even Clippy is sad. I mean, even Clippy is going, going, what? I mean, it's just, <laughs> I mean, this is, but again, these are the tools, these are the tools that were being provided to the school districts to use to build their websites. They weren't being given the, a, a better tool to use. This is just what they had to use. And so they made the best of what they could. What, what, they made the best of what they were given. Um, if you talk to the technologists in the schools, right, programming teacher or a, a CTO or something, they're going to go, yeah, I could easily fix this problem. Easily. Not a hard problem to solve. But I don't have access to the source code. It's a closed source system. The vendor doesn't give me, give me the code. I can't do anything. Can't help you. Hands are tied. Um, the solution, of course, right? We're all at WordCamp. <laughs> the solution is to migrate all of these school websites to WordPress. Let's get them off the proprietary systems. Let's 
move them to an open source solution where you have more freedom and more ability to build the websites that our schools need. Um, you know, you guys, as who's, who here is a parent, who here has children in schools? Yeah, I'm just about everybody, right? You guys are the WordPress experts. You should be going into your school districts and saying, hey, you know, our websites aren't that great, but I'm li I'd like to help. You know, I know this system called WordPress that I think would be perfect for our school district. I'll help you migrate, or I'll help you find a company to help to migrate all of our websites to WordPress, and we're going to have then have better websites and better serve our community. You know, you guys are the experts. Get involved, and then you can fire the vendors, right? These expensive proprietary CMS vendors, fire them. You know, save that taxpayer money. I mean, we're all paying crazy high property taxes with different levels of. Uh, I mean, in, where I live in, the, in New Jersey, it's ridiculously high. It's like 55% of my taxpayer, of my property taxes goes to funding the schools. You know, in some places it's like 12%, but um, it's a lot of money that's being spent to fund our schools. Of course, that money has to be spent on infrastructure things like websites. So why should a proprietary CMS vendor collect that money when you can do the same thing better in WordPress for free? Um, these, these companies are collecting taxpayer dollars and delivering a bad product and a bad service. Case study. All right. So this is the district that I work for. It's a big district, around 40,000 students. Um, we migrated the entire thing over to WordPress over a summer. Um, here's some numbers. You don't see this very often in presentations. These are real numbers. We spent $30,000 to migrate everything, including new design, new templates, new, you know, new software, new, new WordPress backend, everything. Um, we are hosting on WP Engine because we don't have a sysadmin to maintain the, secu you know, the security updates for a, uh, like an AWS server. So we just use a dedicated managed server. We rely on the, vent on the hosting company to keep things secure. A great company. I kind of like them. They're a little expensive, but I like them. Um, Year one cost, we spent $64,000, right? It seems like a lot of money when you think about it. But again, we're a very big district. And when you compare it to the number below, we were spending $59,000 every year just for hosting websites, just for this proprietary CMS. $59,000 a year. That's actually lower. It used to be $88,000. So, <laughs> We, they got it down, but it was still a, a huge amount of money being spent just for hosting websites and a CMS solution. Um, <laughs> yikes, you know. We went from 64 from, from year one, because you, you have to fund the build out of the website and the migration, to 14. So we, in year two, we saved 50 grand, right? $50,000 saved. Look at that, year three. We actually realized that we overbought our dedicated managed server. We didn't need to spend $1,200 a month. We could spend $600 a month. And so year three, year three we, only, we only spent $7,200. Again, we went from 59 to 7,200 just by moving to WordPress. We also spent $9,000 on a content migration script. And so there's a story behind this. I have plenty of time, right? How are we on time? Okay. There's a story behind this, and this is important to understand. I was working with this vendor in uh, Pennsylvania. I'm not allowed to mention their name. Um, but I called them up, and I said, can I get a copy of the database? Just give me a dump to .NET at my, you know, SQ, Microsoft SQL. So just give me a dump of the database. And they said, we'll get back to you. I said, all right, filed a ticket. A week later, I'm like, hey, where's that dump I asked for? Uh, I got an email back and saying, um, uh, we can't give it to you. And I'm sitting there going, this is our data, right? The school owns this data, yeah? They agreed, yeah, you own it. And I said, well, why can't I get a copy of the database? And they said, well, our legal department won't let us give it to you. 
It's like, what? what? What are you talking about? It's our data. Give me my data. I just want to use it. Their legal department got in touch with our legal department. <laughs> lawyer says this, lawyer says that. And it turns out that they are correct. They cannot legally give me a copy of the database because from that, I could derive the DB schema, which is their intellectual property. So legally, they're correct. So I was like, all right, well, there's a way around that. If I can't write a database migration script to go from SQL to MySQL for WordPress, I can certainly scrape the hell out of the website, right? <laughs> so I had a vendor write a plugin, a custom plugin. You'll see it, uh, hyphen importer.php. And all that does is you run it, and it goes out to a website that you define in a config file, and it scrapes every single page on the website. So it basically sniffs the HTML, identifies where the content starts, where it stops, and it just sucks it and copies it and, and, copies it and injects it into the WordPress um, WP Posts table. And it also grabs any associated images on the page and puts those in the media library. So everything that we needed to do by hand, we had done with an automated script. And we missed a few things. I mean, uh, it's a big website, 30,000 pages. <laughs> the database is like 40 gigs. It's huge. Um, the big website, 100,000 media assets, images, PDF files. But to do that by hand would have been like a room full of 20 interns. <laughs> copy, paste, copy, paste. And we just didn't want to do that. So we scraped it, didn't get everything, but it got most of it. And we were able to migrate over a summer as opposed to three months of interns doing a lot of manual, manual migration. Um, it adds up, right? So in five years, we're projected to save $158,000 of New Jersey state taxpayer dollars. Uh, New York Public Schools is a New Jersey state funded uh, district, and there's a lot of reasons for that, but we're not funded by uh, local property taxes. We're funded by property taxes from around the state uh, due to a, a law that was passed in the 80s. So we saved $158,000 over five years. Um, here's another example. So there's a, I'm playing a time, right? Let me look at the time. Yeah, I've got time. Another example. So I was on my way to WordCamp Dayton a couple years ago. It was, like, you know, it was a year and a half ago. And I'm driving across Ohio in my car. And the check engine light comes on. I'm like, oh, that's the last thing I need. My car to break down, middle of Ohio. So I limp, I limp it to Columbus Mazda dealer. And uh, while, they're, while they're fixing my car, my phone rings. And there's this guy on the phone. He goes, Cameron, 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 I need your help. I found your videos online. I need to talk to you. I represent, I'm a, I'm a lawyer that works with a board of education in uh, Osceola County Public Schools in Florida. Uh, big district, um, 90,000 students, I think, or something like that. Uh, he's like, we're about ready to sign a contract, uh, $150,000 a year, five-year non-breakable contract, $750,000 million, $750, on a uh, Edlio school messenger product. So Edlio is a CMS vendor. School messenger is like a mass notification mobile app push notification vendor for schools, right? So these two vendors teamed up and basically went and ripped off Osceola County Public Schools for tune of $750,000. He's, like, he's like, I need your help. Help me educate what's going on here that this, we don't need to spend this kind of money. And so while my car was being fixed in Ohio, I spent two hours on the phone with this guy. And I said, look, you don't need to spend this kind of money. You can do it for a lot less. Um, unfortunately, they were so far down the path of that contract being through the, the legal paperwork with school districts that I was unable to convince them to not sign the contract. And they went and they did it. So I feel bad for these taxpayers down there because that was a lot of money. To just for, for what they were getting, a basic CMS and a, a mobile app, a lot of money. Um, it starts to add up when you think about it. 14,000 plus public school districts in this, in this country. Um, 
you could do the math. I mean, school districts vary in size, but it's easily millions and millions and millions of dollars of our taxpayer money being spent on these public on these systems that sometimes don't work that well. What can you use that money for instead? Well, how about the more important stuff like paying our teachers better, um, bringing back the arts program that was cut? You know, football players need new uniforms. I mean, there's just so many things that that money could be spent for better than a crappy CMS product from, from a vendor. Um, by moving to WordPress, we got a fresh, modern, responsive design. Uh, one of the best things I think about WordPress, and I think people here will raise their hand, is the menu management. <laughs> it's beautiful. If you ever used a proprietary management system, the menu management is always bad. It's always a nightmare to use. WordPress got it right a few years, you know, five years ago, and they've stuck with it, and it's a beautiful system. I think it's easily one of the best things about WordPress is how to manage a really complicated menu system like that. Uh, this is one of our school sites. So if this was the district site, this is a school website. So we kind of parent-child theme relationship going on. It kind of works really well. Um, but it's not just us. So this district in Utah, uh, Granite, they're a big school, 90, big district, 92 schools, even bigger than Newark. And uh, I found this website online, and I, was, and I figured out who built it. And so I called the guy up, and I said, I said, Chris, Chris, I found your website. I'm really impressed. How big is the team that built this website for you? And I expected, oh, it was me and an agency and, and three other people. And he's like, no, I did it all by myself, one guy. And I was like, whoa, one guy who was part-time co consultant with the district did this entire thing. I was like, whoa, amazing. I'll hire the guy in a heartbeat because he does such a good work. <laughs> I was really amazed. So, but that's the power of using WordPress is you can have one person who knows what they're doing to go in and replace an expensive CMS vendor just with the skills and using and building on top of WordPress. One guy. You guys, you, you, every one of you could do this. Um, what school is this? Fairfield? No, that's Granite. This is one of their school websites. Um, uh, Montclair, New Jersey <coughs> migrated their high school website over to WordPress. Did a pretty good job. Uh, Fairfield, Connecticut started you know, move their website to WordPress. And so we're starting to see more and more school districts kind of wake up to this problem of spending taxpayer money on something that doesn't work for them very well and moving to an open source solution like WordPress. Uh, what else can you do with WordPress? Well, we're building a district intranet for our employees. We're building a student portal. Um, I'm looking to build a, new, a Google Sites plugin for WordPress. So that if all your teacher pages are in Google Sites, you can use WordPress to manage those pages through the Google Sites API. The problem is Google Sites 2.0 just came out last week, and it doesn't have an API. So I don't know if that solution is even going to work anymore. I, gotta, I have to look at their release notes to see if they actually plan an API for Google Sites. We'll see. Um, we're building some more portals for PD and IT classroom newsletters, and we're going to start turning on push notifications for our teachers so that if a, a teacher wants to send a remind, homework, do your homework reminder to just her class, she can do that through, uh, through the mobile app. Um, so what's next? So I'm building a company called School Press, which is basically a WordPress for schools services company. And I'm starting to migrate you know, districts. Here's one. Uh, Southside ISD down in San Antonio. Again, look at these numbers. You know, they were spending 25 grand a year for a vendor, and uh, they came in and paid me 15k to build it out, and 3k, three thousand dollars a year for hosting it, saving taxpayer money. It's another one. This is another district in New Jersey. They were already on WordPress. They just wanted a bunch of new themes and custom development. So I was like, all right, 10k, build it out and they self-host it. So, and then you can fire these vendors, right? You know, get involved, bring WordPress into the school district, and fire the vendors and save taxpayer money. Um, the school districts need your support. They need you to come in and say, look, I will help you 
ma uh, maintain WordPress. I will help you because my kid is in the school district. I will help you be. I'll become the WordPress expert for you. You know, volunteer. Um, and now we have some time for Q and A. How's it going? Um, you had um, 59K, I guess you mentioned, was the, what you had been spending. And then when you uh, first made the new plan, it was 64K. I wanted to know if you had those cost savings projections worked out, or did it, was that a great bonus later, or <laughs> we, did you we already knew, know? We knew that we were going to save money because we, we wouldn't have to spend 59K every year, year after year. We knew that we would spend the same, you know, year, the budget from year one, we would spend the same amount of money. And then we knew that year two, three, four, five would be an additional savings because we weren't paying that vendor anymore. Okay, that's good. It's yeah. just one of those things that came to mind. <laughs> Um, so, what? Who are these? Um, who are the people that need to do the buy-in uh, mm -hmm. at these districts? Yes. And who are they taking advice from? And what are those people saying? To yeah, them? yeah. It, every district is a little bit different. Um, sometimes you have to go directly through the board of direct, board of education because they make fi all the financial decisions on what's being spent and how. Sometimes it's just getting the ear of a superintendent and selling directly to him. Sometimes it's a superintendent who um, makes that responsibility to uh, part of the information technology department. And then sometimes it's part of a communications department. So at Newark, the funding and the control of the, of the public websites is under communications department. Um, and then the websites that are public facing for students and teachers are part of the curriculum department. So you have to look at what you're trying to replace and which department controls it, and then whose budget that money would come out of. Okay. It really does vary from every district to district. Okay. And who are they taking advice from? Because I've talked to a lot of uh, people who say that when they try to pitch an open source solution, generally it's somebody in their team that's saying, no, don't use that. That's bad. Yeah. It's, there's, it's not going to work. There's a big education component. You have to go into the district and educate them. Open source is secure, and you have to explain to them why open source is more secure than a proprietary system. So most proprietary systems are security by obscurity, meaning that because the, the source code is not available, nobody can hack into it. But that's patently false. Um, because a lot of the security exploits across a, like a platform are the same. So if you have a proprietary CMS running on Linux and an open source CMS running on Linux, the exploit vector is going to be identical between those two. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to educate them about this. Is the open source software actually, because you have thousands and thousands of people looking at the code, eventually, over time, does become more secure because the bugs are patched faster. It's an education component, for sure. Hi. Um, can you talk a little bit about why WordPress instead of other uh, open source uh, CMSs? Yeah, so I used to be a big Drupal developer. <laughs> I, did, I built some really big websites in 2003, 2004 in Drupal um, because that's kind of what I was steered towards at the time. And WordPress was still kind of like this um, unbirth the baby in Matt Mullenweg's head. Um, he, there was like a fork of B2 Cafe, and then it started to grow. But at the time, things were built in movable type and Drupal. Um, so the reason that I didn't choose Drupal over WordPress is because Drupal 8 took like five years to release. I mean, I was a big Drupal 6 and 7 user. And I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and it just was never released. And the UX was really bad. And by the time Drupal 8 came out, um, I'd basically thrown away all of the experience I had in Drupal, and I went with WordPress because it was a much more, the release schedule was much quicker than with Drupal. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about how you manage roles and capabilities and how you handle training when you have yeah. a lot of people, like you were talking about teachers, administrators, that maybe yep. have varying degrees of technical skills. Yeah, so sites. the roles and caps basically are defined 
based on what your district needs. So in our case, we have administrator, we have site administrator, we have technology coordinator, teacher, board member, uh, student, parent, but some of these we don't really use yet, but we've built them into there. Um, so those are basically the you know, user role manager in WordPress. It's pretty easy, pretty easy to define those. For training, we offer once a month, we, have, uh, we offer WordPress training in our central office and in one of our computer labs, and we have people sign up through a WordPress Gravity form, and they come in and we do the training. It takes about four hours. We show them how to build pages, how to edit pages, how to add content, how to edit content, um, how to send a newsletter, how to create a soliloquy slider. I mean, it's basically the, the basic CMS functions that they need to manage a website. So it's once a month. And then my other question is, are you building most of these as multi-sites or are they yes. standalone? It's all multi-site. So we have one really big multi-site and then we have a couple of one-off installs. Like our enrollment website is not part of the multi-site. It's a, it's a, a standalone WordPress site at a different domain name. Hi, trying to convince uh, a school to switch uh, the content management system that they are using. It's a very political situation, yeah. especially if you are an outsider uh, who benefits, uh, who has no benefit uh, in, in the switching the system. What would you say that are the three key reasons that will lead an organization to move from yeah. their current vendor to WordPress? The first, is, the first is money. You save a lot of money by moving away from a vendor. Um, the second is ease of use. It, you know, using an open source solution like WordPress is a lot easier for people to use and keep their websites up to date. Um, and the third is the extensibility of the platform. So if you're using a proprietary vendor and you need a new piece of custom functionality, like for instance, I was trying to use this proprietary vendor and I wanted to build like a pan and zoom Google map with, uh, um, with each of the schools in the, the four wards of Newark. And so you could pan and zoom and see which schools are running each ward. I couldn't do it inside the, inside the proprietary vendor CMS because they were uh, loading an older version of jQuery in the head of the, doc, of the document, of the page document that I couldn't update. So I needed a newer version. So I called their tech support up and I said, look, I, can just, want to, I just want you to upgrade uh, jQuery for me because it's outside of with a template structure that I have access to. And they said, oh, we could do that for you, but it'll be 20 grand. Nice. Like, and I was like, <sighs> I was like, all right, this is the vendor I fired, right? I basically, oh, I have a story behind that. How much time do I have? Because I have a lot of stories. <laughs> Quick story. So this, the VP of sales for this vendor, after she learned that I was firing them and moving to an open source solution, she called me up and she's yelling at me on the phone. She's like, blah, 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 blah. like oh, calm down, lady. Blah, blah, blah. Lady, calm down. Screaming at me on the phone because she knew she was losing one of her biggest clients. And I said, lady, your product sucks. You're fired. Get, you know, figure it out. Um, it, it's, it's, you have to use the, the technologies that serve your purpose the best. And this vendor was not them. Next question. I have a couple questions. Um, the, these multi-sites, did you build them yourself or did you have a small team to build them? Uh, yeah, so it's a lot of work for one guy. <laughs> um, yeah. I used a, a, a company, I shouldn't mention their name, but they're here, uh, who helped me build the entire thing out. Okay. So the, um, WordPress and services company. Now, if I'm sure maybe you've had in the past, uh, have you had any of these multi-sites, uh, have, have they been hacked before? No. no? Never been hacked. Okay, I was so, gonna ask if it has, who handles that? Uh, mostly us, I mean, if it does happen, it would be me experiencing it, and then I would go to our hosting company, which is WP Engine, and say, hey, help, uh, let's roll back to a backup and figure out what happened, and then just go through the cleanup process. Okay, so, uh, Building multi-site is probably not so much a one-man job. You probably would need a small team at the very least, um, right? Not necessarily. I okay. mean, if you know multi-site, you can certainly do it with one guy. It's okay. not, or one, one girl. It's not, 
it's not that difficult. It's a little different than standard WordPress, but once you understand the differences between, between them, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, thanks. So I work with our local school district. I built them a sports website, um, but they use a third party vendor for their district sites and all the school sites. And when I go to this vendor's website, and I've experienced this with all the other ones that I've seen to find, that, that information about the price is very, very hidden. So are we looking at somewhere around $60,000 as a low ball figure? For a big district, yes. Okay, so this is one of the bigger districts in, in the state of Kentucky where I live. Mm -hmm. um, and so if I were to approach the school, like you had the issue with accessing that data and pulling that data down. So how would I convince them that some of this data may get lost, but yet we see the cost savings on the other end? So what yeah. would be your advice the argument um, on that is, side? The argument would be is like if you migrate from one proprietary vendor to another proprietary vendor, you're yeah. going to lose data. Okay. It's just there's very little you can do about it. Okay. So migrating from an, uh, one vendor to WordPress, you're still going to lose some data, but because you have a lot more control of what you can put into WordPress, sure. you can actually save a lot of that data. Okay. And there's a lot of strategies for how to scrape websites and how to, if you have the database itself, you can actually do a table-to-table -table comparison right. and write a script to inject it. It's, there's guys here who could do it. Sure. Uh, uh, WebDev Studios, uh, Brian Bessenlaner, he's, a, he's fantastic at that stuff. Okay, thank you. I missed um, the very beginning of your speech, so I don't know if you covered this or not. Have you... Um, had to deal with ADA compliancy on any of your sites yet because there are several districts in Pennsylvania that just got sued for it. Yeah, um, not specifically, but we did build the theme with ADA in, in mind. So we made sure that it met the core level of the Section 508 guidelines. And mostly out of the box, if you're using like a Genesis or some kind of a framework, all that's already done mm -hmm. for you. So it's just a matter of double checking and making sure you don't miss something. Now, um, do you control the teacher sites with that also, or do no. you educate the teachers? We have talked about moving all the teacher sites to WordPress, but because it's not inside the department that I'm in, it's a ownership issue. So they want to use Google sites. We're like, well, okay, you can use Google sites. We're not going to stop you. Um, but we can find ways to get WordPress and Google sites to work together. So it's that kind of thing. So I actually work for the school district of Philadelphia, and we are migrating over to WordPress very soon. Um, it is a lot of websites and a lot of people managing content, um, over 300 websites mm -hmm. that need to migrate over. So my concern is, how do I try to head off some of the issues? We think WordPress is very easy, but some of those teachers and principals are not, and I'm trying to figure out what is going to be the biggest hang up when I say, you now have to do this. Um, Again, it's, it's, again it's, if you move from one system to another, there's going to be retraining regardless. So moving from a vendor to another vendor, you have to retrain. Moving from a vendor to WordPress, you still have to retrain. There's no getting around it. The nice thing, though, is that WordPress out of the box, the ease of use for creating and managing content is by far the best in the industry. Uh, for an open source product, I mean, you have to sell that over and over again. That, the ease of use and the usability of this product is so easy that you know a, a third grader can do it. I mean, my daughter's in fourth grade and she's programming stuff in Scratch. I mean, it's just like these kids are great. And you know, if you have the, the support structure in place, get your high school kids involved. Get them. You know, give them um, a mentor to work with and get them involved in keeping the websites up to date because they're going to pick it up like that. Okay. Digital natives are like. So there's no big hang-up that we should be worried about as we proceed? You're going to get a lot of pushback from the vendors, of course. The vendors are going to go, well, you know, this and that and support and all that. But yeah. if you can build those same kind of things in place, you shouldn't have any issues. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Oh, we're done. Thank you, everybody. Uh, if you have any questions here for me, I'm here afterwards. Okay.